Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allison if you are new here, and today I am sharing our DIY master bedroom makeover on a budget. That's definitely a mouthful, but I think it's important to hit all of those points because we completely transformed our master bedroom using just a couple DIYs, a little bit of paint, some manual labor, and only a handful of new things purchased for this space. So if you're ready to see how my husband and I transformed our master bedroom into the master bedroom of our dreams while still being renter friendly, just stay tuned. So here is the starting point of our master bedroom. These are the before shots. As you can tell, we have a great space to work with, a nice big window, and fantastic furniture to start with. And honestly, this bedroom makeover wasn't about completely getting rid of this entire room and gutting it. It was about repurposing things we already had to make better use out of them and for us to enjoy them more. We also are renting this space, so all of our DIYs are renter friendly. So if you also are renting your space, maybe you'll get some inspiration from this video too. The first thing I'm doing is vacuuming. We have a dog who sheds a ton, and I'm actually gonna be painting the furniture inside of this room, so I wanted to make sure we had a nice clean slate with the least amount of dog hair flying through the air. I also wanted to start small on this project, this is the first time that I'm painting real pieces of furniture, so I wanted to start with just the nightstands to kind of get a feel for it, figure out some do's and don'ts before I move on to the bigger piece of furniture, the dresser. Now I'm laying down a drop cloth to protect the carpet in our bedroom because yes, I am painting this furniture inside of this room. Our bedroom is on the second story, so it'd be very challenging to move these heavy furniture pieces downstairs and then back upstairs. So I'm just using a bunch of precautions. I'm gonna be very careful, but I am painting it all inside this room. The next thing I'm doing is dusting and wiping down all of the furniture pieces in all sides that I'm painting so I have a nice clean surface to be painting on. With all the drawers taped up, I'm ready to start painting, which is always the fun part. This is my favorite part of any project, like when you see the big transformation start. Now for painting the furniture, I wanted to go with the simplest option with the least amount of work involved, especially since we were doing all of this project inside of the bedroom. So I decided to go with a chalk paint. This way I didn't have to use sandpaper and rough up any of the furniture because as you can see later on, there are gonna be so many drawers that I am painting that it would have taken me ages to sand all of these down for another paint job. So I'm really happy with the decision to go with chalk paint and the specifics will be linked down below in the description bar. Actually, everything I used for this DIY project that I can link will be linked down below. But just in case you're curious now, this paint that I'm using is the Rust-Oleum brand chalk paint and it is in the color linen white. Teenage ground, running from palm to gloom like blood. Champagne and 
Now a few tips that I picked up from the internet and honestly just going through this project myself was one, know what kind of finish you're going to be going for with the chalk paint. I definitely wanted a smooth finish. I wasn't looking for it to be distressed or rustic at all. So I wanted to be sure that while I was painting, I was working on painting with the wood grain. That way the paint strokes are all similar and alike and blend into the wood. I also will later on end up sanding this down too. If you guys are painting a project yourself and want a truly smooth finish with chalk paint, sand in between every layer of paint that you guys put down. Now once I finished the nightstands, I moved on to do the same exact process with the dresser, starting with completely clearing it out. I just stacked all of my clothes next to the side of the bed, and guys, we were roughing it for a couple of days. It was a lot of coats of paint on this furniture and then a finishing wax to go on top, so this room was out of commission for a while, but it was all worth it in the end, but here's the giant pile of clothes I was talking about. Once all of those were out of the drawers though, I repeat the same process that I did with the nightstands, vacuuming and dusting, wiping down, and then prepping them to be painted. I also decided to remove all of the hardware instead of trying to tape it and then just paint around it. This way it'd be easier for all of the painting and it would be a cleaner finished product. Like I already mentioned, this project was a major labor of love. It took lots of time and energy, and I am so in love with the finished product. I also loved getting to film it and now share it with all of you guys. So if you guys are really enjoying this video so far, it would mean so much to me if you could go down and give this video a like and also subscribe to my channel if you are new here. It really means so much. It also helps me perform better in the YouTube algorithm. YouTube really loves to see you guys liking and engaging and commenting. So if you guys want to help my channel out, help me grow a little bit more, and if you want to see more videos like this from me, please go engage if you're able to, and it would really mean the world to me. Now I'm going to use a little bit of YouTube magic to fast forward to the next day so you guys don't have to watch me do the second and third coats of paint that I used on this furniture. Three coats of paint was a lot, but it definitely was worth it for covering up black paint with white paint. Now I'm going in with an 800 grit sandpaper and very lightly going over everything that I have painted. But once I'm happy with the sanding, I'm gonna go and vacuum up as much dust as possible and then go in with a tack cloth. It's basically a sticky cloth to try to pick up as much dust as possible. Now to finish this project, I wanted to make sure we were sealing it properly, and rather than using a polyurethane, I decided to go with the popular choice for finishing chalk paint, which is a wax. Now this round brush I picked up off of Amazon and used to paint some of the coats onto the furniture, but I really loved to use this brush, especially for waxing all of it. 
The waxing process might seem a little intimidating or weird. It definitely was brand new to me when I started this project, but it's really easy to do. All you do is dip your brush in the wax a little bit, rub it onto the surface of your painted product, and then after I covered the entire piece of furniture, like the entire nightstand or an entire drawer, I would go back with a cloth and then just gently buff it out. With the nightstands really starting to come together and bring the room to life, I pulled out the two side lamps that Christian and I both brought from our separate college dorms that did not match, and I honestly don't know why I haven't done this DIY before. But basically, I'm gonna tape up all of the parts that I don't wanna paint, and then I'm gonna take it outside and spray paint both of them the same color black. I was going to need Christian's help for moving the dresser and taking off the attached mirror to be able to paint that, but he was busy at the time, so I started working on this wall project. Now, if you've been watching my channel or any of my videos recently, or even on my Instagram, you might be a little bit confused as to why I have all of this tape on my wall. Well, there is a blog slash Instagram account called Pretty in the Pines, and she showed that she DIY'd wall molding or picture framing. There's some fancy French name for it too, but basically you could just buy molding or trim from your local hardware store. We got ours at Home Depot and then my husband cut them down to size. He has a saw in our garage that he used to cut all of the angles and basically I'm just going to use this wall adhesive and then attach them to the walls and make a pretty molding in the pattern of the tape on the wall. It was a little bit tricky. It involved a lot of measuring, double checking the level, and a couple little mishaps but thankfully they were pretty easy to fix and correct. The wall adhesive pulls off pretty quick if you're on top of it and you can just cut off a new piece and place it where you need it to be. Ultimately this project was a lot easier than I thought it would be because of that blog post I mentioned earlier. I will link that down below. She included lots of detail about how they did this project in their home.
if you look closely you'll see that some of the corner seams are not perfectly flushed together, mostly by my own error, but don't worry, there's a very, very easy fix that I found in that same blog post I've now mentioned three times. She suggests picking up this Elmer's wood glue filler and it just squeezes out in a little tube, you can rub it in with your finger and it basically makes that entire corner seam disappear and makes the molding look absolutely flawless. So once all of the molding was on the wall, I filled in every seam with this wood filler and then I'm going to paint this molding the same exact color of the wall it's on. Christian was finally free to help with the dresser, so we're starting off by clearing all of the junk that had piled up onto it, and then we're going to pull it off of the wall, and Christian's going to unscrew the attached mirror, that way we can take it off and move it out of this space. The one new thing we bought for this room was a new round mirror to hang here, and it's from Target in the Studio McGee collection, and I made sure I got it on sale. Normally their mirrors and home decor will cycle through sales, so keep your eyes peeled for that, because I love this mirror in the room. It really makes it so much more modern and such a cool juxtaposition because all of the molding on the wall was super rectangular and squared off and had harsh edges and so having a round mirror on the wall next to it balances it out pretty well. Before we bring the mirror into the space though, it's time to finally paint the dresser. We had to do the dresser and the nightstand on different days because I didn't have a big enough drop cloth to cover all of this space. So now that the nightstands were done and the drawers were dry, I could move those somewhere else and then finally move the drop cloth underneath the dresser to paint it. Just like with the nightstands and the drawers, I'm going to do three coats of this paint, and this is actually the second can of the chalk paint we ended up buying. I had read a bunch of places online saying chalk paint goes such a long way and will last you through multiple projects, but I guess doing three coats of paint on all of this furniture was a little bit too much. We ended up only using one of the little cans of wax to finish all of our furniture, but we did have to go through two cans of paint to paint it all three coats. Look at us when you hold me close But you always say that I'm the one you want the most So baby, pull me closer, put your arm around my shoulder So they know not to waste their time Cause I've seen love it and I've seen tears fall I just don't want them to be mine So don't break my heart Cause I gotta say for someone good I'm
You guys are gonna see me struggle here trying to find where this drawer goes. It just didn't seem to fit in any of them. And then I realized it's actually one of the nightstand drawers. I was not able to move my nightstand next to my side of the bed yet because all of the clothes were piled up there. So they were still mixed in with the dresser drawers. But once I figured that out, it was pretty quick to get all of the drawers for the dresser put back in place. And this room is already starting to feel like a completely different space. I was a little nervous going with the white paint because we have beige walls and I just wasn't sure how they would look together, but honestly, the white furniture brightens this space and makes it feel so much larger than it originally did with the black furniture. Now we get to do the fun part, cleaning up a bit, tying up the loose ends, and really pulling the entire room together with decor and styling. This is my like bread and butter, my favorite part of this room, and what I was honestly dreaming about doing this entire project. Painting all the furniture and doing the wall molding was the hard work that was like laying a great foundation for all of the styling, but the styling is truly my favorite part. Like this black lamp against the white nightstand, there's so much contrast, it draws your eye directly to it, but it's subtle and neutral enough that it's not too crazy. I don't know. I love the style of the room. I feel like I was definitely inspired by Studio McGee and their Netflix show, so if you have not watched their series yet or not seen their stuff yet, go check them out. They're very very expensive. I can't afford any of their furniture, but I love their style and I love to take inspiration from them. Now that the dresser was painted and back in place, we're finally hanging the mirror. So here Christian and I are struggling with getting it perfectly level, exactly where we want it to be. And it was actually quite the struggle hanging it on the wall because this mirror is like practically flush against the wall. So you can't really see it being hung up while it's going in. So enjoy watching us struggle to figure this out for a while. Now the only furniture left in this room that's not in the right place is my nightstand and I had put everything that went in my drawers on the bench at the foot of our bed. So I'm going to clean that up, throw away a couple things, and then move that into the nightstand and then move our nightstand back where it belongs on my side of the bed. But first, I need to use a little more YouTube magic to put all of our clothes back in the dresser. Next thing to tackle is hemming the curtains in our bedroom. I hung these curtains up weeks ago, maybe even months ago at this point, and never bothered to hem them. So if you are new to hemming your curtains, I have a really easy way to do this. I'm just taking four little pins from a sewing kit that I have, and then I'm putting my curtain all the way spread out, and then I'm gonna press it up against the carpet to find where it meets the floor, mark it with a pin there, and then I'm just going to iron it with a bit of hemming tape. I'll link that down below from Amazon for you guys too. It's very, very inexpensive and it's removable. So if you're gonna be moving to a new space, you can just pull apart the hem and then redo it to the perfect length of your new home.
Above our bed, I'm gonna be hanging two photos and I actually have a really fun and exciting announcement for you guys. I have just launched my own Etsy shop. It's called A Place Called Home Co. You can find it down below in the description bar and I will be selling the digital files for these prints among other prints. I love photography. I was actually a photographer throughout college. I worked for the athletic association at our school so I was photographing all of our sports, all of our football games and that's when I learned to really love photography and I took those skills with me on study abroad and ended up taking a bunch of photos while we were there. I have photos of Disneyland, of beaches, of beautiful landscapes and I can't wait to share those with all of you guys and it would mean so much to me if you guys went and checked out my Etsy page. Don't feel obliged to buy anything but maybe if you favorite it as a shop or just check it out it helps that new business grow and I can't wait to see where this business and this new adventure takes us. So these photos are taken in Venice when we were studying abroad there, which is actually where I met Christian, my husband. We were on the same study abroad program. We didn't go to the same college or anything. We're not even from the same state, so it was kind of funny how we met that way. But these two photos were taken on a trip that Christian and I were on when we were visiting Italy, and I love them. They are so near and dear to my heart. And if you want to print these photos for your own home, like I mentioned, my Etsy shop is where you can find them. They're sold as a set of two or if you have your eye on just one of the prints, they're sold individually also. And how I print all of my photos is just through Walmart's photo website. It's really affordable, great quality, and these are printed within two or three hours that I placed the order, so it came in super fast. Now the last thing to do in this space is decorate the dresser. And I didn't buy anything for this dresser, I was just shopping around my house. With the dresser decorated now, who's ready to see some before and after shots of this space? And here's our new bedroom. I still cannot believe that this is now our bedroom. I love this room so much. Hands down my favorite space in this house. And once again, guys, thank you so much for following along on this journey of transforming this space into the bedroom of our dreams. It really is like a pinch me moment every time I walk in here and see the hard work that is literally painted on these walls. And I wanna thank you guys for following along and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.